Hello, everyone. I forgot to unmute myself. My name is Josh Greenway. <laughs> Welcome to the 2022 Let's Play Scrabble Awards. I'm joined by the one and only Heidi Robertson. Heidi, how are you tonight? I'm awesome. Uh, I'd be better if I was with you guys, but uh, here we are. I'm glad to be doing this. I'm so looking forward to it. Absolutely. You bring up a good point. We are broadcasting here from uh, from Albany. Thank you, Billy. Billy just pointed out that I was on mute to begin with. Uh, we are here at the Albany Marriott in Albany, New York, and that is where we are broadcasting from. So tonight, what we're doing is the Let's Play Scrabble Awards. Heidi, do you want to tell people what the Let's Play Scrabble Awards are, what the plan is here? So basically, we're going to put on a one-hour show um, highlighting all of the people who've been supporting the Let's Play Scrabble tournaments this year. We're going to recognize the players who perform best at, at six tournaments. So we'll, we'll go through those as, as we go. That's right. The six tournaments of the year, and based on the stats from players who played at Let's Play Scrabble tournaments, we are going to do some awards. So I think... As always, what I try to do when we start tournaments and do the announcements and stuff like that is just remember how lucky we all, all are to get to play this awesome game and like to be together and all that kind of stuff. So from a gratitude standpoint, the first thing I want to say is thank you to all the players who have played in a Let's Play Scrabble uh, dot com event this year. I love you all and hope to see you at a future event. Um, and also, we have a very good friend of ours to thank as well, Heidi. Do you want to uh, take that one? Yeah, we want to say thanks to Seth for all of his work on Cross Tables, uh, and not to mention Ulu Tool, right? Which is oh, using quite of a course. bit. Yes, but so, definitely yeah. Cross Tables is like a director's best friend for tournament management display of ratings like how can you do any better than cross tables uh if you if you like cross tables sh shout it out in the chat um now i also also shout out to john chu running tsh that's the software for doing all the pairings and putting all that stuff together those between those two programs those are really key to running these tournaments um so yeah th those are the thank yous that i wanted to do uh, before I we just, got started of course. Uh, I really, I really want to also thank you and Kieran for all the amazing work that you do and the heart and passion that you put into all of your events. They're always something to look forward to. And um, I just like getting back at, after after COVID, right? Like was so amazing this year with the Kingston Canadian Scrabble Classic being the first one, such an amazing event, and that we, you know, getting to see all our old friends and meeting new friends. And I want to give a shout out, like I never met. Beth Mix before, and there was another Beth uh, I just met, and Annette I'd never met. She was fantastic. Um, Chloe Fassus I just met this year. Just a ton of great people. Now, Heidi, you just mentioned Chloe. I've got a special guest right here. Chloe, come on in. Throw <laughs> these headphones on and pick up that mic. And we're looking right in the camera hey, here. Chloe, hey. how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. Say hi. Say hello, Heidi. <laughs> Chloe, it's good to see you. I was just saying, I don't know if you were listening, but I was just saying you're one of the great people I was able to meet this year who I'd never met before. So, <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Awesome, that's awesome great person. Um, Chloe, uh, what Let's Play Scrabble events are you planning to do this year? Do you know yet? Um, what Let's Play Scrabble events am I going to play? I think yeah. the Kingston, the Canadian Scrabble Classic awesome. in Kingston I'm planning to go to. Um, hopefully the word cup in Albany this summer, still trying to work out my plans, but that's the goal. Um, and maybe Montreal, if I can make it up again, but also you're, and you're usually at Lake George too, right? I think I won't be able to make it this year. I'm planning uh, to study abroad in the Study fall. abroad. Oh, that and, sounds yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Well, hey. very good. Now, Chloe was just part of a broadcast we did two days ago and did a fantastic job commenting on an expert tournament. That was awesome. Thanks so much for your participation in that. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed that. I watched some of that. Great job, Chloe. Thanks uh, for doing thanks. that. Yeah, it was my pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Fantastic. How? What are your uh, hopes for this tournament? For this Albany tournament, I'm hoping to um, 
you know, have a good solid winning record. My goal is around 13 or 14 wins. Um, but also just, you know, happy to see everyone have a good time celebrating the new year. Um, yeah, looking forward to a fun tournament, lots of games. Yeah, this tournament is so amazing because it, you know, you get to close out 2022 and bring in the <laughs> new year 2023 too with the same tournament. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right. Heidi, the branding <laughs> on this tournament is the first tournament of the year. All right. That's what we call it. <laughs> Chloe, thanks so much for dropping by yeah, we're course. gonna swap you out we've got another special guest Heidi <laughs> yeah, let me take me. that and uh if you want to pass the headphones over great here we go we got another special guest hello it is oh my God, Annette! the Hi! one and only Hi! Annette Overstead <laughs> Annette how are you I'm doing great how are you I am fantastic you're always fantastic during a poker <laughs> 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 We're just speaking of commentary, Annette did some amazing commentary this year too, right? Oh, thank um, you. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't know it if it was great, great, but I had a good time. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, at the you, at the uh, Scrabble you know, Players Championship in yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. So that was awesome. It was super fun. For sure. Now, this was kind of your first year of tournaments. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're we're celebrating all the players who came to Let's Play Scrabble tournaments. So mm -hmm. your first tournament of ours was the july 4 tournament mm -hmm. i think yeah, right correct, yeah. and now you're back I know, for new I year's which is here. awesome so Honestly, if i hadn't been here earlier this year i don't know if i would have come back <laughs> because i wouldn't have known how awesome it was and like just knowing that you guys were going to be here which y'all are my favorites you know it's just a good time <laughs> well that's that's definitely what we want to hear yeah. what are you hoping for in terms of your performance at this oh, tournament god i'm probably gonna get crushed but that's okay i just want to have a good time honestly the top division is just so tough and i'm one of the bottom seats it's like i know what to expect and that's okay <laughs> Very if good. i could win a couple of games make some cool plays i'm sure she's gonna win more than a couple of games if you yeah know. i hope i hope so <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Annette is a real up and comer. That is for sure. And we we so appreciate you just coming in and being part of the family. Uh, so. No, I love being here with you guys. I think it's so fun. Fantastic. Well, Thank thanks you. so much, Annette. Thanks for dropping by. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the mic me. from of you. Course. And we've got hi. we've got one more <laughs> special guest to say hi to here before we get on with the awards, Heidi. Let's bring hi, in really the one, the only, <laughs> the legend. Stefan Franklin. Yeah. Stefan, how are you? It's nice to see you. I hope I haven't made legend status already. I feel like it's too soon for that. <laughs> not for us, not for this group. <laughs> um, I, was, I was wondering if we're going to get a, a second word freak to bring in a new crowd. <laughs> you know what? That's Chloe's job is to write word freak too. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, uh, that would be, yeah, that would be cool. She should do that. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I may have a little bit left to write. We'll see. <laughs> Not another book. Um, but speaking of projects, though, you have the National School Scrabble Championships yes. coming up. What are you excited about as you head into your second year spearheading that uh, project? We are returning to Planet Word, this amazing museum in Washington, D.C., for a second year of the NASSC there. Um Looking forward to just building on what we started last year post-pandemic. We had about 70 kids from across the country compete um, over two days. Um, we had every Scrabble organization involved in supporting the event. NASPA, WIGPO, Merriam-Webster, Hasbro especially. Um, and it was a blast. And we're just hoping to sort of build on that with another great stream directed by Will Anderson and see if we can get a few more kids there this year and another couple of days of awesome competition. That sounds, uh, that sounds awesome. Heidi, I was lucky enough to head down to the school Scrabble championship. Um, it was such a, it was such a cool event and that venue is amazing. Um, I, I really want to say, uh, you know, tonight we're celebrating everything about our let's play Scrabble tournaments. And I just want to thank you for yours and Chloe's support over the course of the last year. We saw you guys multiple times Absolutely. this year. Um, and it's just really, uh, it's always a pleasure to Well, this is all guys. great for the game. I mean, this is about building the community. This is about doing more and different things, including conversations like this, just to be out there, to show that there are people who care about this game and want to get more people involved in this game and to attend these amazing events, which are a ton of fun. I mean, playing Scrabble is always fun, but it makes it, a much more rewarding and memorable experience when we can tie it with 
community type events, whether it's trivia, whether it's karaoke, whether it's after hours games, and whether it's just connecting with people that, you know, we haven't connected with quite as much as we did um, in the last few years and getting back into the routine of being part of the tournament scene. And for me personally, it's just great to be here, but it's also pretty cool that my daughter is getting so good. At this. <laughs> I'm sure. pretty proud of that. So I, I've, got, I've gotten over the she's passed me in rating and you know <laughs> my ego is not wounded anymore i'm doing quite quite okay she's put in the work and it's great to see her climb the ranks well i love thank you very much for that description i couldn't have said it better myself definitely uh doing the hotel multi-days heidi is always a great way to bring people together and that's always one of the standards that we try to apply with let's play scrabble so I think we want to thank our guests for dropping in. We uh, we love you. Me, I treasure my Word Freak, my autographed copy of Word Freak. That's what brought me into the game. So it's just always such a pleasure to have you as a friend and, uh, and a player at, uh, at our events. Right back at you, Josh. Thank you for everything you do. Very good. All Thanks right. so much. Okay. Heidi, thank you. Yes. We have yes, got... Uh, we have got some awards to give away, right? Yep. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's get in. Oh, look at that. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, there are a bunch of players playing on Woogles right now with Judy Cole directing. So shout out to Cheryl Kagan, another, uh, another player who uh, has uh, come to a bunch of Let's Play Scrabble events. Yeah. Now, this first award, Heidi, is one that is very close to my heart. Do you know what award we're giving away first? I think the first one we're going to give away is the most LPS games played. That is right. The players who have played the most games throughout the year. So we're going to we're going to do a couple of runners up here right? Do you want to take us through? Now we did, we're going to cover the events in just a minute, but the, we did six tournaments this year. I don't know what the maximum number of games you were, you were able to play in, but I think our winner played in just about every single one. But why don't you take us through the runner-ups and then we'll reveal the winner. Yeah. Okay. So, so we had Derry Lokes. Is it Lokes? It's Lokes. Derry Lokes. Um, I should know that. Sorry. Um, she had 86 games. 86 of your games? Yeah, 86 uh, games had, this year. Yeah. Um, they're just LPS games, though, right? That's right. This just is just LPS. Let's Play Scrabble games. Yeah. Then we had Carl Higby with 99 games. One short of triple digits. Josh Sokol coming in at 104 games. Lovely. And that's going to lead us to our winner who I don't believe is in the room. No, our winner is uh, just going to have to uh, watch this at home later. But our winner with 125 Let's Play Scrabble.com games played is the one and only Terry Kang. Terry, MVP as far as I'm concerned, always ready to play, always ready to play all the events, can't get enough Scrabble. What, what do you think, Heidi? And, and taking off, like... She, she's been doing really, really well. So, yeah, it's great to see her climbing up and doing all the events and singing with me and all of this great stuff. It's been, it's been amazing. 125 games. It's a lot of games. That is awesome. Yes, and definitely a handful of karaoke songs. So uh, <laughs> love, love you, Terry, and uh, we'll see you at more LPS events this year. Let's go to our next category. Our next category is most wins, the raw number of wins uh, for the year. You want to let's let's do the same thing. Take us through the runners up. Okay, so we had Josh Castellano with. 52 wins. Then we had Terry King with 57 wins. Mm -hmm. And Carl Higby, some familiar names here, 60 <laughs> wins. And our leader in the clubhouse with an awesome 73 wins. He's going to join us here live right now. It's the one, the only, the fabulous, the tall, Josh Sokol, everybody. <laughs> Josh, come on in. Throw on the headphones. They're getting a little uh, tied up there, so maybe you can, yeah, like, yeah, perfect. 
Josh is a uh, pro broadcaster. He knows what, what he's win? doing. You won most wins, 73 wins on the year at Let's Play Scrabble events this year. That seems pretty high. Are you sure? I am definitely <laughs> sure. Yeah, very high. <laughs> we, we did Hi, the- Heidi, also. Hey. And hello, chat. <laughs> And in addition to that, I think Josh should hang on because we've got one more category to give away here. Um, And then we'll ask Josh an actual question. But we're going to go to most spread. So why don't I do the runners up? And then, Heidi, you can give the total. The runners up are Max Panich. He picked up almost at plus 3,197. These are some big numbers. Ari Sinke plus thirty nine ninety six, and Josh Castellano plus five thousand one hundred and forty points over his competition. Over, I mean, that's just an incredible number. But the leader uh, here, lean in here a little bit, Josh, because I'm changing the format. The leader, of course, is also our wins leader. With what is the total there, Heidi? Sorry. Six. 1,366 points. There's a lot of sixes in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's uh, that's great. That's me? That is you. Sure. Okay, I feel like you're just making these numbers up just to get me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate you played uh, the second most number of games this year. You don't, We're going to cover some of the events from earlier in the year, but you dominated last year's event this new year's event last Mm -hmm. year um with a i believe it's a 20 and 2 record so what are your expectations for this tournament well i told you yesterday that i wasn't expecting to lose a game this entire time (laughs) however i lost my first game but I'm still not intending to lose any games. Now that was the early bird, right? Yeah. You won the first early bird today, going yeah, yeah. six and one, and plus six hundred and something spread. Yeah, but I, that's it. Like, it's nerves are are, are gone, and like, yeah, no You're more ready no more rock. losses. Yeah, all you right. You believe in me, Heidi? I, I believe you. I want to ask a question though about about spread now. What is your philosophy? Do you like to run up the spread just because you can, so that you can have these massive numbers? No, no, no. I I don't consider myself very good at racking up spread, but um, I guess I'm too hard on myself <laughs> considering <laughs> considering what happened. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Keller says hello. By the yeah, way, he's watching. I, I from said home. Hi, Hey, Jason. He's here. He's here too. Nearby. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and there you go, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> nice I'm job, only Billy. winning because I don't have to play Twitch chat. That is also true. <laughs> love it. Love it. Well, we love having you here, Josh. You were a big part of our coverage two days ago when we were broadcasting the Toronto Match Play yeah, Tournament. Great. You were an anchor on that tournament That's covering the last five on, hours. Like, if you guys subscribe to this channel, you can they can watch that, right? Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. There's 10 hours, the 10 hours of high level expert uh scrabble yeah where is there a particular game that you thought was awesome there i remember were, there was a there one were point two game. really crazy games yeah. yeah um yeah one of the games was between matt canick and ari sinky and another was between matt canick and robin pollock daniel so matt canick is the most exciting player of <laughs> the end of 2022 <laughs> and uh yeah they, definitely they check that out guys it was awesome and josh put it all together so yeah definitely subscribe to the channel i don't know yeah, yeah, it's say. the channel you're watching right now. Just click subscribe. It's free to subscribe. Uh, and you'll get more Scrabble content. So having said that, thanks so much for being here, Josh. Love you. Love you, man. Appreciate you. All right. <laughs> here we go. And there is uh, my uh, my girlfriend, Farah, in the chat saying, congratulations, Josh. S. Okay. Now. We are going to, first of all, thanks everybody for watching so far. We're going to keep going. We've got more awards to go. And if you're enjoying this content, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. doesn't cost you anything. It helps us out. And when we put out new content, uh, a lot of our content is going to be streamed games. If you like that sort of thing, uh, go ahead, subscribe, click notifications to all And uh, you'll get great uh, Scrabble content showing up on a regular basis. 
Um, I think it's important to note here too, Josh, that only people who subscribe can actually do the chat in the YouTube, right? That's right. So now that's that's a setting that I turned on. So if you want to say hi in the chat, you got to subscribe. So uh, we're looking for <laughs> subscribers subscribe at this point. That is a strategy. Now we have, um, we've got more awards that we are going to bring on, but we're going to bring on a very special guest. Heidi, do you know who we're bringing on next? I hope it's Kieran. That is right. We're bringing on Kieran. Kieran's coming over now. He's just gotten himself a cold drink. You're going to throw these on and hold this up close. And you're right. looking at the camera here. Yep. Kieran, how are you? Good to see you, buddy. Awesome. We've been, here. Good We've been hanging out all day. I know. I know. It's a good time. We I had a good. Uh, hey, how are you? <laughs> we had a good uh, early bird uh, one today. Uh, smooth, I think. Oh, unbelievably smooth. I barely had to do anything, Heidi, because. <laughs> Wait, were you here? <laughs> because. <laughs> Kieran is the maestro behind the keys and just making it all come together. Uh, everything is electronic. Um, you know, we, we, you run a pretty good show. I think so. We both do. We both do. Even though I made fun of you. <laughs> that's all right. Well, that's our relationship. We yeah, like it is. to have yeah. a little fun here. Absolutely. And that's one of the things we like to do together when we run these tournaments is we run very few tournaments on our own. Right. Uh, but the team up is kind of what makes it cool. And of course, we had Heidi helping us out uh in excellent fashion in Lake George. Is that right, Heidi? Yeah, thanks so much for that. My directorial debut in Lake George. It was uh, super fun and I learned so much from Kieran. So anybody looking for a mentor director should be hitting Kieran up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, it was good. We appreciate you doing that. I think it was quite smooth. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, speaking of Lake George, we are going to take a trip down memory lane. Okay. We're going to, we're going to tell people uh, a little bit about what the tournaments were this year. I think we're going to move through this fairly quickly. So I have a little graphic for this. Here we go. Here were the six LPS tournaments this past year. So we're gonna we're gonna walk through them and just anything that comes to mind, feel free to mention. I've got a couple of highlights. We started last year, and and Heidi, maybe we'll trade these off. All right. Um, we started last year with Albany New Year's, and the big storyline there was it was a double Josh win. We had Josh Sokol on the NWL side right. cruising to a masterful 20 and 2 record, just dominating. And then we had Josh Castellano going 16 and 6, taking care of business on the Collins side. Two Joshes, two wins in the main event. And then what was our next event there, Heidi? And then we had the Canadian Scrabble Classic, which I was so excited about this tournament. It was, I was just so pleased with all the new ideas you were bringing to this tournament. You had the premier division. We had eight players. I got to be a wild card in that division and mess things up. Right. <laughs> uh, we played an exhibition um, burrito game on stream. It was just so, so, so much fun. Hold on. You we, had... up. we got the town crier. This is so town much fun. Town crier. We yeah, also had the uh, hockey guy, the hockey mascot. Uh, mascot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that and was the Keller took down Will Anderson in the in the Premier Division, and uh, and then it was my it was our karaoke debut. So uh, so many good things happened. What a <laughs> what a karaoke party that was! One of the great things about Kingston is what they called Old Stones. Can you tell the people what Old Stones is? Yeah, it was Karen? just great. They did a great job. There was a nice little bar right off the main playing room. And uh, they stayed open for us and had it staffed. And then we had, it was just a comfortable place. It wasn't the game room. You know, it was a, a more intimate environment. It was great. And, uh, and it was like I, a bar. The bar was open. People could get drinks. And yeah. we were playing trivia in there. We were playing uh, karaoke. And we're going to do yeah, the same great. thing this, this year. Too, Josh, I don't know if you remember, this was the first major tournament that we had in Canada. You guys had Lake George. Canadians weren't allowed to come. So we were all just so ready to get back and see our friends and get playing again. So right. 
That's right. It, it was a big tournament, and we're expecting another big one this year. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but if you're looking for a tournament to come to, uh, you wouldn't, you can't go wrong with the Canadian Scrabble Classic in Kingston this year, coming up on Family Day in Canada and uh, President's Day right. in the U.S. It's that weekend. So we're making it supersized this year, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, that was also the first one that we ran a stream at. We negotiated right. that sponsorship with Scope. Hopefully. And uh, we also put our sort of local community, like getting involved with the local community. There was a lot going on at that tournament. There was. So lots of work. And it's coming up in like six weeks, which yeah, is it's not insane. like we don't have enough to do, but we're doing another tournament in six <laughs> weeks. Right. Then the third tournament of the year was, and I think you should take us through it. It was Canton. What do you remember about running Canton? Canton, New York's not the biggest tournament, but. Uh, honestly, we get, I think it was like half Canadians, half Americans, yeah. just because it's close, uh, you know, to the border. And, uh, you know, it's always uh, it's always a good time. It's a small venue, but the people are nice there. It's friendly. Um, there's a lot of people. And I do remember we had two brand new players. So that was great. It's always fun to have brand new players at a tournament. <laughs> Billy is asking, where's the stream for this tournament? Billy, we're going to see what we can do during this tournament. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, you may get to see something. It may not be a full stream. We'll we'll see what we can do. And also, Billy, we're always looking for sponsors, just a hint. <laughs> uh, also, the winners for Canton were the previously mentioned Josh Sokol going 13-1. Right. and one. He really got off to a strong start last year. And then uh, Carl Higby took down Collins with a 12-2 and two performance. Um, after Canton, we came in, it was a big summer last year with the Canada Day 4th of July tournament uh, in Albany, New York, in this uh, building, but not in this room. We were in the big room yep. and that was a big uh, that was a big tournament. Um, we, we saw a lot of people come out. The winners there were Max Panich coming up with a 17 and six record and Josh Castellano right. as well. 17 and six in Collins. What do you remember about that tournament, Heidi? Uh, I remember it's always one of my favorite ones. I don't know. It's just such a great tournament. Um, but this, this actually, what I do remember is <laughs> I didn't stay at the tournament venue this time. Oh and Yeah. And it meant it meant less socializing with the group, which is what the, your our tournaments are all about, right. right? So, so yeah, I did. I did feel like there was a little bit of missed out a little bit there. I remember um, that. I, yeah, I we think I would you. prefer to stay in the venue. It's next. more fun when you're around. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have so much fun together. So yeah. Yes, and Jason points out we did karaoke, and I also came out in a pilot's uniform. So there you go. Just in case anybody <laughs> forgot, there's me. There's Heidi. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we're running down last year. Let's finish this trip down memory lane. We did, we also did a tournament in Toronto that was sort of special. Uh, Heidi, what do you, yeah, that, was, you describe? That, was, that was for your 50th birthday. Oh uh, we had I quite a few it. people show up for that. It was, there's a lot of Toronto people that I hadn't seen in a while. Some people from Montreal, the Ottawa, a couple of us anyway. Yep. Um, yeah, it, it was great, great fun. We had a lot of fun. Five games. Uh, I remember it because I ran up and down the stairs all day long. <laughs> it was because it was floor. on two different floors yeah. in a bar. No <laughs> elevator. Uh, yeah. I remember it because Jared Kappel came up big, was 5-0 and in the top division, ran his rating up to 1990, and Jason Brosma took down Collins with a 5-0 and record. And uh, that... Um, uh, there you go. That Capel uh, performance was he was not the highest rated guy in that tournament. And he was taking down Jackson. He was taking down Josh. He was right. taking down Lloyd Mills. He was taking down some real high end players. He went five and oh, it was really incredible. Actually, at his next event, which was an early bird in like Georgie past 2000. So Jared Capel, who was uh, commentating for us at the match play tournament two days ago, really killing it out there. And then. Uh, do you want to finish this up here, Heidi? What was our last tournament? Obviously, it was the Lake George tournament, um, and that's just that's just a favorite for so many Canadians, especially. I, I know it's obviously a favorite for let's be Americans too, but it's definitely one of our favorites. We have a in Ottawa, we have a bunch of stat can people who <laughs> always go every year, like six, you know, go and share a couple of rooms, and it's just a great time. 
um, Cesar Del Solar won that one with uh, 13 and two. Very incredible uh, performance. Impressive, yep. Impressive uh, showing. Josh Castellano won Collins with the 12 and three. Uh, there was this was the biggest non-nationals tournament of the year to 138 players. Yeah. So and and thousand dollar prizes. So yeah, it was a it was a good time. For one of the things, uh, two things I liked about it on the social side, we had uh, Cesar and his wife both played. Yes, and um, they uh, um, Mina came late, right? Um, and uh, late late was a late add to the tournament, but she had a babysitter, so her son was around, which was kind of fun to see. Lucas. Lucas, he's yeah, getting ready. Lucas. Yeah, he's getting ready to play in his first tournament. So he was just sizing up the competition. <laughs> yes, yes. And then, I should have had that picture ready to go here. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, the other thing that that was uh, that was fun about is we had a couple of Canadians who shall rename nameless who came, played in the early birds, and then decided, nah, I'm just going to hang out for the rest of the tournament. And we we're like, okay. <laughs> So that was fun. that was fun. They definitely participated. We'll just say that we're gonna participate. They participated. But... I'm just gonna leave it at that. It stays in uh, yeah. what happens in Lake George. And we already mentioned George. that was my directorial debut, so obviously <laughs> special near and dear to my heart. Fantastic. So that's our trip down memory lane. We gotta get to some more awards. The the last thing I wanna mention here is that um uh just a quick stat on the year. All games, all players. We did 3,653 games this year. That's a lot of tally slips. That is a lot of tally slips. Uh, and we are definitely going to do more than that this year. So we've got lots of things planned for 2023. We hope uh, that you guys will join us. Thank you. Always directing there, Karen. Very good. <laughs> okay. And with that, Thanks very much, Kieran. Thank you. We're thank going you. to uh, say say goodbye. All right. Thanks for hopping on. All right. Bye. See ya. Okay. And let's very quickly, Heidi, we've already did a little bit of a plug, but let's just talk again about the Canadian Scrabble Classic. It's coming up February 16 to 20. We're taking registrations now. We've got about 50 people registered. We're going to get a bunch more. Um, and, you know, we're, we're doing a 23-game event, a couple early birds, karaoke, trivia, fun surprises. It's going to be a lot of fun, um, and it's coming up in six weeks. So if you're looking... Uh, for a tournament to participate in, I think Kingston's the one. What do you think, Heidi? Yeah, it's a it's a really good one to go to. Um, highly recommend. I'm gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's get back. This is supposed to be an award show, Heidi. Let's get back to giving out some <laughs> awards. What do you say? Yeah. Our, let's do it. Our next award is one of those interesting awards. I always like giving, we, one of the things we do at these tournaments is give out what we call bounty prizes or bonus prizes. And one of my favorites is low win. That's when you get those tight boards. You got to have sharp elbows. You got to really work, uh, you know, inside and, uh, I don't know. What uh, what other cliches can I say here? You got to get in the corners. That's what you would say in Canada. Um, uh, to really win this. And we had somebody win. Oh no, we'll, we'll do a quick run up here. Right. So yeah, I'll let you it. announce, I'll let you announce the winner, but we had people win games on the NWL side with a three, a score of 313. You gotta, it's gotta be tight to win 313. That was Sid Lashley. We had Mad Palazzo win a game at 308. That was literally a game against me, Heidi. That oh, was, yeah? <laughs> that was at my 50th birthday party. It was a little bit, the circumstances, it was kind of crazy. But she won 308, 302. It was incredibly stressful for operational reasons, not really for the game. It wasn't the best game either one of us ever played. But that was 308. Then we had Diane Franz win a game at 307. But the winner, do you want to announce the winner here? Yeah, I will. Carol Salvino won a game with under 300 points. She won with a 299. Pretty incredible. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Um, we also had uh, on the Collins side, obviously the scoring averages are a little bit higher. The lowest Collins, and I could be wrong about this. I tried to get a real good look at it, but I think the lowest Collins win was 338. And the runner-up would have been 346. 338 by Roger Coleman, who I just saw a minute ago, and Richard Buck at that three. That was a minute. Uh, 
forty six. Winning score for a for a Collins game. Right. Yeah, right. and now right. we're looking for our special guest, who should be, uh, who I know is in the chat, uh, because we want to talk about our next category, which is high win. So, um, yeah, let's see if Cesar, if you're going to be able to join us, because I know you're watching because you've been active in the chat. Um, <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about high win, Heidi, and we'll see if Cesar is able to join. Um, first of all, we had 30 players or there were 30 games that went over 600 uh, over the course of the year, which is a ton. Um, but at the same time, I don't know what the normal rate is like. 30 divided by 3,653 games is like 0.8% of the games went over 600. Um, have you ever scored over 600, Heidi? I oh, Cesar, check I your email. Check your email, Cesar. And uh, I'll try to uh, fire off the link to your messenger right now. Go go ahead, Heidi. Sorry. I was going to say, I, I got a 672, I think, in the last pub tournament I played. I think Ooh, that was the 672? Yeah. I think so. I, I don't know. Oh, uh, The last God. pub tournament. You can look it up if you care. <laughs> I don't oh, remember bet. stuff like that. Very good. <laughs> um and let's just see, I'm going to try to send this link out. There were some other interesting pieces about players who scored 600 or more. And we are going to be talking. Uh, I see some guests have arrived here. Let me go back to the rundown here. Um, let's talk about the highest wins of the year, Heidi. Do you want to run us down uh, from top to bottom? And then we will talk with our winner. From top to bottom, so so the most the, or the highest win was yeah. Cesar. So we want to go from the next most, right? And oh, so we'll go from right, sort of well, move up. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so okay, so at, uh, after after that one, it was Josh with a six forty in NWL. Yeah. Matt O'Connor. Did I say Sokol? Because we have two Josh. Yeah, so Josh Sokol scored a six forty in NWL. Matthew O'Connor with a 642 in Collins. Winter, uh, same, 642 in Collins. Wolf Rampo, 642. Like, this is amazing. These are all Collins games. They're all the same score. That's weird. And crazy. That three games tied for second at 642. But we had one score to uh, rule them all. And that was, let's go ahead and uh and do this this is an awkward looking shot but here we go <laughs> it was 664 points by none other than cesar del solar cesar how are you man how's it going hey doing good that is good <laughs> let's get a better look at cesar here here you go hey, there's the there's a smile that we're looking for um <laughs> So 664, you put that up in Lake George. It felt like a little bit of a magical tournament uh, for you. What was it? What can you tell us about that tournament? Um, yeah, no, that, that was like, I was telling people that was like the luckiest tournament of my life. And like <laughs> that game kind of like exemplified it because it was against, you know, Michael Fagan had just won nationals. And, um, you know, he's a high scorer. He's a, he's a good player. And like, I, you know, I just, drew everything i got a triple triple on him like just at the right time and it was like a triple triple that i had just mentioned to mina like the day before i was like hey did you know the anagram of wardrobe is draw bore and that was literally <laughs> a day before and then i seriously there's a b right there and i have draw bore like natural through the b that is amazing <laughs> that is incredible. yeah so it's like, okay. <laughs> he, played like a, he played like a beautiful like six tile like overlapping play somewhere else somewhere else i was like oh okay <laughs> well now I'm gonna drop a triple triple. No, that was that's, nice. that is awesome. Point, I was like, oh my god, could I break 700? Because I've never broken 700 before. Yeah. <laughs> what is your highest? What's your highest score ever? Is it higher than 664? I think I got a 666 in club once. Gotcha. But 664 might be my tournament highest. I'm pretty sure it's my tournament highest. I, I had a 635 club with an outrageous phony on someone who was just tired of playing. So it really does not count as a 600. I do have a 701 in club. Oh, That's my awesome. God. What is up, Heidi? Jeez, you keep dropping these huge numbers. 
breaks you're on like, the man you're showing us up here um <laughs> So there are a couple other interesting stats about the 600 club uh, for the year with Let's Play Scrabble. And we're going to show all the names in just a second. But there were some really interesting uh, achievements there. So first of all, one of my favorite things, how about this, Cesar? I don't know what your reaction to this is, but Wolfram Poe at the 4th of July tournament scored 642 and then 638 in back-to-back -back games. Like... That is pretty incredible. That's what, yeah, anyway, an average of 640 <laughs> over, two, over two games. But that's pretty incredible. We had Carl Higby score a 639 and a 623 in the same tournament that happened in Canton. And we also had in the chat, we've got Cheryl Kagan in the chat. She was one of two Div 2 players uh, to score 628 this year. Most of the 600 plus club are in Div 1. There are about four scores, uh, four or five that were in lower divisions, but 628 topped it out. And that was Cheryl Kagan and Brian McCarthy. Both had 628s. And the only players to score more than one 600 point game were Max Panich with two, Ari Sinke with two, Wolfram Poe with two back to back, and Carl Higby with three. That's a that's a murderer's row, um, <laughs> all in one year. So let's go ahead and take a quick look here. Get your screenshots ready, and you're gonna have to blow this up. But this is the list that our friend uh, Cesar here is at the top of. Um, Cesar, what do you think when you look at those names? I don't know how well you can see them. Yeah, I can see them. Those are those are all very good players. Um, I, you know, had to get super lucky, and uh, you know, like I don't think I, I don't think I can. I break six hundred often, so it's just one of those things where all the stars aligned, and you know, triple triples and the, the absolutely blanks and all that stuff. But it was uh, a lot of good people good, on that list. Yeah, absolutely. good players. All right. Well, with that, congratulations on getting the high win of the year. Congratulations on winning Lake George as well. And we can't wait to uh, see what you're going to be able to play this year. And also just what's happening with Woogles. We all love uh, Woogles. And, um, you know, what What uh, we should have led with that, I feel like, Heidi. But uh, <laughs> what can we expect in 2023 from Woogles, Cesar? Um, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm working on the, on this, uh, annotation mode right now. Like we call it like sandbox mode annotation mode. I'm not sure what the, what the actual like name, but kind of internally, just a way for people to be able to annotate their live games. So you can think about like your games that you played at a tournament or, or even like games that are currently being played in the tournament. You want to broadcast it to the whole world and then have, yes. like, have it show up in a pretty interface with the like, analyzers and all that. We can't so, wait. It's going to be so cool for streaming. Like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Working on that. So well, really and then uh, Josh Sokol just used uh, your tournament software to do the pub tournament that yeah. just happened, right? So that was yeah. fun. Yeah. We're also going to make improvements to the tournament mode. Maybe we have more automatic tournaments so that people can just, you know, more people can play the site, more people can play the tournaments online since I don't, I don't get to, like, go to many tournaments, at least for the next few years. So <laughs> I like yeah. to, like, use my tournament mode and then um, another thing we want to do is like improve the puzzles. I think like like we we released puzzle mode and it's been you know people like it. There's a few people who did all the puzzles, which is insane. But we need to um, we need to add more puzzles and improve the mode. Like add more types of puzzles, and make them you know less. Well, super exciting. Thanks for all your work on that stuff, yeah. you and the team. Yeah, thank um, you. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen. Thanks so much for popping in. Uh, we really appreciate it. We love you, Cesar, and uh, we hope to see you at a Let's Play Scrabble tournament at some point in the future. Yeah. Uh, so thanks there. so much. Perfect. All right. See you later. Let's uh, let's keep this moving, Heidi. We've got another but, award but you, to give you, away. You didn't Go say ahead. the last one, which was that there were 30,600 points scored in 2022. What's that? <laughs> that was your last stat there. Oh, sorry. That was 30. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm reading, no, reading no. Wrong. That was 30. 30. I know. I should have put a little X in there, but uh, it, yeah, I didn't have the ability. I needed uh, somebody smarter than me to figure out how many points were scored <laughs> the entire year. It's a lot of points.
it's oh, definitely no, a way lot of more than that. Sorry, I don't know what is wrong with me. Nine, <laughs> nine thirty, forty. It's all seven, good. Whatever. Okay. Speaking of nine forty, let's keep this moving because we've got yeah, another yeah. big guest coming up who's with us, but we're gonna get to them very soon. So we want to give away the next award. What's the next award for Heidi? The next one is high rating gain. Oh man, right. high rating. Everybody loves to get a high rating, right? Everybody loves that. So well, some people care about that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only person who doesn't. Okay. So <laughs> we had three people this year. Now, the way we do the high rating gain is per event. So if you gained a whole bunch of rating points in one event, we're not talking about the whole year because again, that's like more complicated math than I wanted to do. So in any <laughs> one tournament or one event at one tournament, what was the biggest rating gain? And we had three people gain a hundred points or more in a single tournament. Heidi, why don't you run us down? Who uh, who are the runners up here? Yeah, so we had Porsche with 106 rating gain, rating points gained in the uh, Albany, Albany? July yeah, 4th, July 4, main, main event, event 104. So. That is pretty good. Uh, congratulations to Portia. And, and then, who's next? And then we had Sebastian Knowles with 114 points in the New York. Oh, New, New Year's, Year's Eve. Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. Sorry. It's all right. The New York Stock Exchange. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't read your shorthand. <laughs> Sebastian never gonna Newell. Ask back, guys. I don't know if Sebastian is at this tournament. I sure hope he is. Uh, I got to review the entry list. But Sebastian is uh, picked up 114. And our winner, why don't you reveal our winner, Heidi? The winner was Kyle Falahi with 326 rating points. How does that even happen? How does 326 points happen? That's, you're massively uh, underrated and you're a good player and you debut at a... I don't know. I don't know. If this wasn't his first tournament, right? No, the, it was the, not his first tournament. The Kingston tournament? But he, he they have uh, what they call acceleration points if it's within your right. first 50 games. So yeah. it helps get you to your right rating yeah. quicker when you get started. So it was definitely part of that. That was in the Canadian Scrabble Classic uh, this year in the main event. He did a fantastic job. And of course, we love Kyle. We play code names with Kyle on a weekly basis. Well, what can you say about Kyle, Heidi? He's brilliant. He's funny. He's sweet. He's adorable. I just love Kyle so much. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do in Scrabble because, yeah, he's really going to, I think he's going to do some great things. He yeah. already has. So. Absolutely. We love you, Kyle. Okay. Let's get to some more, uh, some quick thank yous. We've got more awards on the way. Just a little bit of business to take care of here. I want to say thank you to Heidi, to you, and also to Matthew O'Connor for running so many social events at Let's Play Scrabble events uh, this year. You, of course, pioneered and did a fantastic job taking care of karaoke, and Matthew did a ton of trivia events for us. People love these events, and they're a real distinctive uh, piece. They're always free to participate in. They're a real distinctive piece of Let's Play Scrabble events. We never want to run an event without these types of social experiences because um, I'm just going to give the cell line here, Heidi, and then I'm going to let you talk because we want to do more than I, I listen. I love the idea of giving people the best Scrabble tournament that they've played uh, of the year, let's say. But what I really want to do is give them the best weekend of their year. And that's the goal whenever we run one of these events. And so I want to thank you and Matthew for being a really important part of that vision of that goal. What, how much fun was uh, running karaoke this year? I, I just, I love, love, love seeing everybody come up, seeing people come out of their shells, seeing, seeing people in new lights that you never see them in. There's so many people who you would never think that they would get up there and sing, and they do, and it's, it's amazing to see. Singing is joy. I love it so much. And then the, the trivia, it's super fun. People don't have to pay. They can all get together and just play. There's no, there's, you know, there's no pressure when you're not like, oh, my God, I'm just, I mean, there's always pressure, but. <laughs> it's just so much more fun when you don't have to worry about <laughs> right, all that you sure. have on the line, I guess. But yeah, it's super fun. Thanks to Matthew for doing that. Did a great job. 
absolutely. I also want to say thank you. Well, to NASPA, they help us out from a ratings perspective and a bunch of systems. Also prizes, they donate prizes at our uh, uh, New Year's event. We always do lots of door prizes and stuff like that. Some of those things come from NASPA. Um, and also a big thank you. We already did a thank you to Stefan Fatsis, but both Kieran and I were on that team this year. That was, uh, that was a heck of an experience. So thank you to those guys. Before we get back to the awards, I think we need to do a quick tournament preview. I'm going to get that queued up. So what are we going to talk about here, Heidi? Uh, we're going to talk about Montreal. That is correct. Montreal. Now, Montreal's run for a very long time, and this is kind of sort of breaking news. This hasn't been announced yet, but Kieran and I are going to be offering support, and just the whole team in general, Heidi, you as well, I am sure, um, are going to be offering support to the Montreal team, and ultimately, the Montreal tournament is going to become a let's play scrabble.com tournament it's going to be part of the circuit it's in the northeast a lot of there's a lot of overlap for players already and we think we can bring a lot of fun to that tournament not only sort of uh improve the overall operations and just how that tournament works uh but also bringing the social events right now it's not on the calendar we are searching high and low for a new venue and right now the venue decision is uh we're trying to figure that out but uh what we can share with you is some um draft concept art the what we are tentatively calling it is montreal scrabble fest uh because montreal is a city of festivals and so that's the vibe that we want to go for. So Montreal is such a fabulous place to visit, especially in the warm weather. It's a beautiful city. Heidi, you were there this year. What did you think of Montreal? That was a, a great time. Like, that was one of my favorite weekends. Like you say, I think uh, all of the <laughs> Let's Play Scrabble tournaments were my favorite weekends. Um, but this one was really special. We uh, we had a few extra things lined up, thanks to you uh, and your planning. Um, we we did a potluck dinner. We went out to dinner. We did uh, did we do karaoke? We did do karaoke. Oh, we did. It was we did dive bar oh, we, karaoke. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah, it was amazing. I loved. It. I get I get the tournaments mixed up sometimes because I don't go. <laughs> I just I'm in the hotel room and that's what I remember. But but Montreal there there is no hotel typically at that that tournament as it as it was. So. Yeah, we had an Airbnb, we rented a bunch of people and had a great time, had a potluck dinner, and it was like, it was just amazing fun. I don't remember the Scrabble. Did I play? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the Scrabble, but the weekend was amazing. We're getting some nice <laughs> comments about Montreal in the chat. We're hoping to really blow this out for Montreal and really make it a big event. So keep that in mind. We're hoping to make an announcement soon. I want to give a special shout out to Christine Cardinal. She and I have been calling dozens and dozens of hotels trying to find the right venue. We're going to see what we can come up with. Um, and of course, another one of the beautiful people that I met for the first time this year. And she's just so wonderful. Love her. Absolutely. And of course there are going to be uh, some of our other favorites, Josh Sokol, Kyle Falahi, uh, Bernie Josh, Gottlieb. Bernie the bus ride for us, local transit. Super fun. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but all all the people that you know and love in Montreal, I mean, Michael Fagan, Bernie Gottlieb, Sari Karanowski, there are lots of Montreal players that are going to be part of this experience as well. So that's something to look forward to. Um, let's keep going. We've got, look, we've got more awards to give away. Yay! Let's which get is, more awards. yes, yeah. let's, what is our next category, Heidi? Uh, is it the high average score? That's right, high average score. So this one, like a uh, high rating gain, is um, per event. So you could win this by having a high average score for a main event or for an early bird, whatever the length of tournament, it's the highest average score. So why don't we start with NWL, I think. Is that what we want to start with? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, yeah let's go. Yes. Okay, so so I'll say this one. I'll just start with the first one, which well, the runner, I guess third, would be Ari Sinki with a four hundred seventy-two point eight average over fifteen games, which is incredible. That so is unbelievable. Classic, classic main event. Yeah. Yeah. Then we had uh, Jared Capel with a four hundred and eighty in Toronto main event, but that was five games. 
And we, but we talked about that. That is against some real killers. Averaging that's 480 true, yeah, was yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's true. And then the the winner with 484 was Will Anderson in the July 4th early bird tournament. So that was seven games. Yes. And the so. graphic is incorrect. That is the wrong score. It's a 484.0. But Will did a fantastic job in that tournament, just clobbered people. Um, so now let's go over to the Colin side where the averages are just a little bit higher, but they're pretty competitive, actually. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Matthew O'Connor with a 480 in the Lake George Early Bird 2. That's five games. Mm -hmm. And then we had a 483.8 from Josh Castellano in the Lake George main event. Over Scintillating. Games. Scintillating, so man. 483.8. That's incredible. But that's we had amazing. one higher than that, and that is oh, who is right. getting the award. Yes. The word is going to Carl Higby with a, an incredible 488.6 in the Canton main event, which was 14 games. So Just that's incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Un unbelievable. Okay. Let's, uh, so congratulations to those players. Uh, huge scores, huge scores. Okay. We're right up against the one hour. So we are going to move now, Heidi, as we, uh, hey, Nitz is in the chat. Hey, Nitz. Uh, so we are going to move on to game of the year. All right. Game of the year. We're not going to spend a lot of time analyzing this, but we want to shout out, uh, some games of the year. Now, generally game of the year is a tough one. It can be a very subjective category, I would say. Um, but one of our runners up, uh, for this award was Jason Keller beating Matthew O'Connor 513 to 490, which is, uh, you know, that's a heck of a game there, Heidi. What do you think? Yeah, it's, those are some high scores and be a tough slog in. And, and, you know, that's probably one where the last play decided the, who won. And also, I know this is a game, this is a picture from the game. Um, uh, Jason Keller was telling me with the Q tile where he scored quarried and then squatter, I think, I think he picked up about 200 points off the Q. So pretty, uh, pretty impressive. But he also talked about how he really had to fight off Matthew from coming all the way back in that game and just, and had to cling to victory. Um, our next runner up, is uh, this game, Lou Cornelis knocking off Josh Sokol, 526, 493. Um, there we go. Uh, Cesar is nominating a game in the chat. Everybody's got a, a game of the year. We're, we're <laughs> going with some of, the, well, some of the highest scoring. What was interesting about this game, you're going to have to screenshot this and really zoom in. But uh, in this game, Josh uh, triple tripled, but Lou was able to overcome that and come out with like a 30 point win. So pretty wow. impressive. And our final game and, and our winner here uh, is another Collins game. And this was our highest scoring game of the year. It was Ben Schoenbrunn 558 to winter 494. We don't have the game board to show you. It's not uh, annotated on cross tables, but what a, uh, you know, what a big score. That's incredible for sure. So we've got one award left, Heidi. Do you know what that award is? Uh, is it our player of the year? It's our player of the year. And we're going to get to player of the year in just a second. We want to talk about one more thing before we do. And that is, of course, a very special event coming up on the Let's Play Scrabble calendar this year. That is Word Cup 2023 happening in Albany, New York, in this building, not in this room. We're in the grand ballroom there, which will hold over 300 players. Plus, we have overflow space if we need it. It's going to be a very large event that takes place uh, right at the beginning of July. Um, part of the key for this event for me, Heidi, and what I am looking for here is, uh, number one, we're going to offer players a lot of value for their Scrabble dollar. We're bringing in, I think, $114 uh, room fees uh, for this. And also, compared to other uh, five-day 31-game tournaments, you're going to be able to stay. We're, we're compressing the schedule a little bit, so it's going to be one less 
hotel room night if you're within driving distance. You should be able to do it with four hotel rooms. And because it's over a holiday weekend, you can do it with two vacation days, which is also something that's really going to help people, I think. The second thing is, this is really a team up of Kieran and I who've worked uh, pretty much exclusively with NASPA up until now, but also working with the WIGPO team. And I think we're going to see people from both organizations and we're going to get something really special. Um, Heidi, what are you looking forward to at this uh, Word Cup coming up? I mean, it's always the same thing for me. It's the people, it's seeing everybody, it's hanging out and just, you know, chilling for four or five days. <laughs> like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> um, playing games, playing Scrabble. Play. I don't know if I'll play any Scrabble. Probably I'll just work. Um but yeah, I, I'm I used to I used to say to you, hey Josh, like how can you just direct tournaments and not play? How can you not play? But I get it now. I, I'm all about bringing the experience now. Hey, <laughs> listen, crafting a crafting a Scrabble experience is super fun, I think. Um, and it's what it's the thing that I get the most excited about. Uh, speaking of crafting things, here's the little logo that I made. I don't know if this is the official logo or the final logo, but that's uh, the sort of cute uh, word cup logo that we may be rolling with. But at this point we are, um, we're getting close to opening registration and we couldn't be more excited uh, for this event. Okay. Let's get back to the big final award, which is our player of the year. And uh, the calculation of player of the year is an interesting one. Uh, NASPA awards a player of the year, and they use an algorithm to figure out sort of a player's um, performance rating over the course of the year. We use something a little, something a little different. We took into consideration what their win percentage was at all the tournaments they played in Let's Play Scrabble.com, and we also took into consideration how many games they played. Okay, are you with me, Heidi? Does does any of that yeah, make I'm any following. sense? Okay, so it's obviously important to consider the number of games. So let's go with our runners up first. Um, and our first runner up and again, number of games. So Cesar is a runner up for player of the year because of his unbelievably dominant performance at Lake George finishing with an 86.7% win percentage. Um, but that's over a one event sample size. He was, he only played the one event. So for over 15 games, very impressive, but this makes him a runner up, not the winner of the award. All right. He's sticking with me here, Heidi. I got you. I got you. All gotta right. Gotta play more games. Gotta play more events. That's right. So <laughs> here's an example of a player who played more events, had a really high winning percentage, but this is also a runner up. Chris Vickery played the Canadian Scrabble Classic. He played all of the events. So early two early birds plus the main event, he played 26 games and had a 78.9% winning percentage. And there was also something, I mean, do you know where he came from to uh, play that tournament, Heidi? Well, I see that he came from Ireland. So that's incredible. <laughs> I know, he came from overseas to play in that event. I mean, that was a really, er as you mentioned earlier, it was a really early event in terms of coming out of the pandemic and getting people to play. So um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's why. Maybe he had people in Canada to visit. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, congratulations to Chris on being our player of the year runner up. But let's go to our winner. Um, I am going to, let's bring in, Okay, I want let's do this the right way. <laughs> Our winner played in multiple multi days. They played in New Year's Eve. They played in July 4. They won in Lake George. They won every single main event that they entered. Okay. Um, and they came in with an incredible record of uh 76.5 percent. You've heard his name all over the broadcast and the live picture and the picture I'm about to put up look remarkably similar. Please welcome everybody, Josh Castellano. Josh, congratulations. You're our player of the year for Let's Play Scrabble. What an awesome job you did this year. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And uh, I must say it's also uh, very lucky to be here as well. 
Uh, a lot of breaks had to come my way, but I had a great time. <laughs> well, I, you, go ahead, Heidi. I don't believe him. I, I see the way he studies, and uh, yeah, it's not luck. There's, there's a little bit of luck, but I mean, come on. <laughs> you're, you're putting that work in for sure, and you totally deserve it. Good job. There's a reason this guy's Appreciate rated 20, 2087 right now, coming in as the favorite <laughs> to win New Year's Eve main event. Um Yes, uh, Cesar is uh, is arguing his win percentage, but he's not following along with the minimum games. <laughs> also, <laughs> Josh here won three main events to Cesar's one, so that is the that is the difference there, Cesar. Um, so, Josh, you're coming in uh, to New Year's Eve to play the main event. What are your expectations for this tournament? What are you hoping for? Uh, well, I'm just hoping to play a good tournament. Uh, I find that when you focus too much on the results, it can really affect you, you know, if it goes south. Um, I just, I always try and play a good game, focus on like, you know, and maybe instead of winning the event, you know, not missing a bingo or something for the event or only missing like a single bingo. Those are the goals I try to focus on uh, when playing as opposed to a particular, you know, first, second, something like that. <laughs> That's what I like to you're you're getting some fun comments in the chat there josh we've got uh we've got nit saying uh she's seen you study and yeah she agrees with you <laughs> heidi that uh it's not a matter of luck uh cesar mentions that you were literally flash carding leave values at lake george that's something you don't see very often <laughs> Uh, Jason Keller just wrote in the, just wrote glares in the, uh, in the comment thread. Uh, so really just an incredible year this year for you, Josh. What, um, what do you think is going on this year in 2023? Obviously you're going to play with us here. Do you have any plans to play in the major events this summer? What, what are you thinking about? Uh, for 2023 at the moment, I'm planning to go to all three three major events that I can think off the top of my head. That would be uh, U.S. Nationals, World Cup that, of course, uh, uh, Let's Play Scrabble's running this year, and the Westpac. Um, I'm planning to go to all three. Um, th though that is a lot, I might end up dropping one of them. Uh, certainly, I'll go to at least two. But uh, I hope to be there for all three and just have a great time. Fantastic. Well, I like his chances, Heidi. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely the one to watch there for sure. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. What else can we ask Josh before we let him go? We're about 10 minutes over, so we should wrap up here in a minute. <laughs> um, Josh, I mean, w one of the things that's interesting, I, I don't know that I've heard you talk about what your background in Scrabble is. Obviously, your dad is an expert level player as well, not playing as much uh, recently. But where do you think your chops come from or where does your motivation come from in terms of the game? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I guess it wasn't like a particularly, um, you know, fateful or dramatic start to the game. I think just one day I told my dad, hey, I want to start learning the twos, you know, so I can like play better. And then from there, it sort of got out of control. Um, I guess I wouldn't pinpoint it to one specific uh, like point in time or emotion. Um, I think the, the key is just that over time, I've just slowly put uh, more and more time into studying. So like if I'm studying maybe at one point, I was maybe studying, I don't know, 30 minutes a day and then adding another 30 didn't seem that bad. And then, you know, a year later, adding another 30 didn't seem that bad. And, and now, you know, now it's most of what I do more or less. Um, and it, you know, I, it doesn't feel weird to me, but you know, when you look back, it's like, oh, like this is actually, you know, this is kind of a lot sometimes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's awesome. Um, Heidi, anything, any last words from you for Josh? No, I just want to say congrats, man. Like it's amazing to watch it's, and, and well Thank deserved. You. Yeah. And just Thank to, just to make clear, this is an honorific. There's, there's no uh, cash <laughs> value to this award. <laughs> Well, you're going to get a hearty handshake uh, when you get here on Friday, I imagine, is when uh, you're coming. So thanks so much for joining us, Josh. It's a real treat to have you. And I really appreciate uh, the support that you've given us here at uh, Let's Play Scrabble and playing so many of our events. It's always uh, awesome to have you. So thanks so much. And, yep. and 
just to be just to have uh another uh just to be in the josh family uh that, yeah. that's one of our <laughs> heidi one of our traditions i should mention this between josh sokol josh castellano and i now I may be the only one who really runs with this, but whoever wins the most money at a tournament that all three of us are at, we that is King Josh for the tournament. <laughs> so I that normally is not me, but I think it might have been me in New Orleans this past year. I'm not sure. But uh, hey. more often than not, it's this Josh here. So King Josh, thanks so much for joining us and uh, can't wait to see you, brother. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, yeah, I... I just want to say thanks for running the, these events. They're really awesome. They're always very smooth um, and well run. And I, I called this out in my testimonial, I think, which is on the site. Uh, thank you for asking. But I, I want to call it out here. Um, the pairings for the events I always find are really good. Uh, special attention is paid to them. And that's actually, I know it may, might seem like, you know, nitpicky or, um, you know, a little uh, sticklerish, but I really like it. I think it matters a lot, especially as it gets to the later rounds. And uh, the um, you know, Josh and Kieran, uh, they really um, they really care. So that means a lot. There you go. Big shout out to Kieran on the pairings. Absolutely does a fantastic job. Okay, Josh, we're gonna let you go. Thanks so much for joining us this evening and sticking around a little longer. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Congrats on Player of the Year. Thank you very much. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Okay, Heidi. Well, I think that is it. That is the show. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video. Please subscribe. These are things you can do for free to help us out. And you'll be notified when there's new content coming up. Uh, this is the channel where we're going to put out Let's Play Scrabble.com content. So if you can help us out there, that would be awesome. I want to thank my co-host, Heidi. Uh, you're awesome. Thanks so much for doing this with me. I totally appreciate it. And thank you, Josh. Thanks for all all of you, all that you do for Scrabble. You've done so much over the last, I don't know how many years. Look who it is. Look who it is. There you go. Say hi, Roger. <laughs> hi, Roger. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Roger, all right. Josh. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, we're looking to bring you more content in the future. On this channel, we just did 10 hours of live streaming, expert level content. You can find that on the channel. Again, like and subscribe. And that's going to do it, Heidi. Thanks, thanks so everyone. much. Uh, and uh, we will see you all. Oh, we're going to put up my favorite picture. All right. We will see you all soon. Good night, everyone. Say good night, Heidi. Bye.